Hey guys, there, Soft Tech here, and today we are doing another video on the Crytac Chris Vector. So this Chris Vector isn't mine, it's a customer's Chris Vector. Uh, he reached out to me a while back and asked me to work on his gun and make it into a reliable mid-20s RPS, really good trigger response, overall efficiency, increase the durability, reliability kind of build. And uh, I gotta say, it turned out really well on this gun. Crytac's just seem to upgrade pretty well. There's a couple quirks with them that kind of get in the way. Not everything's as drop-in as I would like it to be, but uh, it's a fairly easy platform to work on, like I said, and I think this build turned out awesome. So let's take it to the bench, and I'll tell you everything I did to it. So the wonderful thing about this build is that I didn't have to use a whole lot of upgrade parts to get what the customer wanted. And so, as you can see, there's only four upgrade parts here, and that's genuinely all I used, besides some shims and uh, some faucet, uh, faucet washers to you know, correct angle of engagement. These are all the parts that I used. And we're gonna go through each one of them and talk briefly about why I chose them. So the first part we'll talk about are these GMT gears. So I didn't know GMT was a brand until I found them on Clandestine Airsoft. I was searching for some 13 to one ratio gears. I couldn't find any on Brill Armory. And so I went over to Clandestine Airsoft and I saw that he had GMT 13 to one gears. You know, you read the description, you find out that there's some sort of SHS rebrand, that's fine. Um, SHS can kind of be hit or miss on the quality control. These were a hit, it appears to be. Um, the bevel was pretty strong, uh, shimmed it obviously well, and the teeth were holding up. These are not the gears, obviously, that were in the gun. This is just another set I have lying around. But the, the be lower bevel teeth look pretty reinforced, which is typically the problem with these SHS bevels, is that these lower teeth just shatter. It's got a lot of anti-reversal latch locks, so that's nice. Spur gear, nothing really to say here, looks good. Sector gear as well, nothing really to say, looks fairly good. The, uh, I tend to check these screws here, because sometimes they're loose. I have found one or two that were fairly loose, and if one of those comes flying off in your gearbox shell, then no telling what kind of damage it's gonna do. So GMT gears, I went with 13 to one ratio gears because I wanted this to be a pretty good trigger response build. 13 to one paired with a 22 TPA motor is gonna be some pretty good trigger response. All right, so the motor I went with is a ZCI 22 TPA motor. Now, real quick, don't get a long type motor for your vector, it takes a short type. The only reason I have this long type here is just a placeholder so I can talk about something with it on the camera here. I didn't wanna pull the motor out of the gun. So real quick about the Vector, it comes with a 22 TPA Crytac motor, but I don't really, I didn't want to use that motor in this build for a couple reasons. First of all, it's a little less efficient than a strong neodymium motor. It has weak neodymium magnets, the Crytac motor does, and so it kind of can be a little less efficient than a strong neodymium motor. Uh, second reason, ZCI motors, ZCI 22 TPA motors actually tend to be a little bit slower than standard most usual it's 22 TPA motors. So like a JG Blue, the traditional 22 TPA motor tends to be about 20 rounds a second on a stock gun, 11.1 volt LiPo. A ZCI 22 TPA is gonna be about 16 to 17 rounds per second on the same setup. And so it just is a little bit slower and a lot more torquey. And so I went with this gun to achieve the 25 rounds a second or so that the customer wanted while getting really good trigger response and efficiency. So that's why I went with this motor. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty great motor. Next part, super simple part, just decided to go with an air seal nozzle. They're four bucks, they increase my shot-to-shot uh, -shot FPS consistency in my experience, and uh, just why not? They're super cheap and they work well. It is an M4 nozzle that'll fit into your vector, by the way. All right, so the piston I decided to go with was an SHS 15 tooth steel piston. And the reason why I went with this piston as opposed to keeping the, cry, the stock Crytac piston was because these pistons are just a little bit more durable in the long run than any other plastic rag tooth piston. And I would even say that about Lonex too. So Crytac's pistons are strong, they're very good, but the, only half the rack is metal, the other half is plastic. And while, like I said, that's strong, it, it's lasted fine and it proves to last well it's not gonna last as long as a full steel rack piston. And that's why I decided to go with the SHS piston. It's cheap, it's gonna get the job done, it's gonna get the job done longer than a Crytac piston will. So that's why I decided to go with this one. So that's all the parts I decided to go with on this build. As you can tell, it's a fairly cheap build. All the parts here are fairly cheap and they're fairly durable and they have proven to be durable in other builds that I've done. So throwing them, in, throwing them into the gun, 
tuning the gearbox, shimming, angle of engagement correction, and a lot of other tuning, it yields a really good result. About 330 FPS and about 25 rounds per second. One real quick thing I'll mention about working on the Crytac Vector before we take it to the chronograph. The Crytac Vector has this really weird uh, sector gear anti-reversal latch. You don't need it. You have one anti-reversal latch on your bevel gear, and that's all you need. I really don't know why they put that anti-reversal latch there. I guess I'll never really know unless someone tells me. But uh, I ended up taking it out. The gun performs the same. Semi works, double shot works, and full auto works. So there was really no reason, in my opinion, to keep it in there. Because it was actually affecting my shimming. And so if you're going to affect my shimming, I want you out of the gearbox pretty quickly. So let's take it to the chronograph and see how it shoots. So as you guys can see from the chrono results, the gun is shooting about 25 rounds a second, about 320 to 330 FPS. These Crytac Vectors Jewel Creek stock, they have a lot of cylinder volume per barrel ratio, even though the cylinder uh, port is placed up rather close to the air nozzle point. Um, so this gun is very, very loud. And that chrono was done with 0.20 gram BBs. It would probably be a little bit more consistent with 0.25s. The heavier weight would just make it more consistent with the jewel creeping. But uh, no, this gun is just awesome. Very loud and a ton of fun to shoot. All right, guys, that's going to have to do it for this video. As usual, please like, comment, subscribe. It definitely helps out my channel and helps out getting views. Um, in the comments, tell me what you would have done differently with this build given the customer's request. Uh, the wonderful thing about working on airsoft guns is that there's a different pathway to get to different results. So I could have gone with a different motor or gear combination, I could have gone with all kinds of different changes there that would have gotten me a similar result. So tell me in the comments what you would have done differently to get the same results. Alright, well I'll see you guys in the next video, but until then, stay tuned Tex.